This video is sponsored by Jason Wyman. Get massive discounts to his game making courses using the link in the description. More info at the end. We took part in one of the biggest game jams in the world, Ladam Dare. We had 72 hours to make a small video game from scratch based on the theme Deeper and Deeper. I joined forces with my brother Liam, Jonas Tyroller, and Yan. Four game developers, each of us generalists, being able to code, make art, sounds, and design. For this project, however, I focused almost all my energy on art and animations. Liam on programming, Jonas on code, design, and some audio work, and Yan on story, audio, and tons of level design. This was the biggest team I've ever been a part of, and it was a blast. We began with a chunky two-hour meeting, brainstorming game ideas that would fit the theme, perhaps an underwater base slowly sinking into the deep ocean, where you would place turrets to ward off slimy horrors, or a game where you would design cave-like levels by placing cards, and then navigate those environments. The theme that stuck the most was a game set underwater. The deep ocean still remains a mysterious, fantastical place, ripe with alien-like creatures. It's a great source of inspiration, and we felt pretty sure we could make an interesting, tiny adventure here. When opening up a brand new Unity project, there's so many possibilities. Our game world was yet to be born, so while Liam and Jonas began coding player controls, some destructible terrain and enemies, Gan busied himself with dreaming up a level design and story and I got to work on art. The ocean's slight wave-like wobble was effortlessly made with the all-in-one shader pack, which I've talked about numerous times in the past because it's so damn good. I mainly used the wave and round wave settings here, which can create subtle, watery ripples. Since the level would be quite large, we needed chunky terrain pieces we could cobble together. I made those of different shapes and sizes. The protagonist is a squishy blowfish. In its puffed-up form, it destroys enemies and terrain. Initially, the controls, although interesting on paper, fell short when put into practice. The player would float upwards and felt kind of unresponsive and quite frustrating to control. It's only on the third day that we settled for a simple dash control setup. Less original, very simple, but at least it was a lot more fun to explore the underwater world. And as we liked reminding ourselves, the focus should be on that thrill of discovery. We wanted players to curiously wonder what lay just around the corner what new creatures they would find, or tiny secrets hidden. I made a bunch of different sea creatures. Finding ideas was a piece of cake that really just skims the surface here. Liam did a lot of the enemy programming, using the A-star solution to get sharks dodging obstacles and following the poor player. There's also a simple patrol AI where a jellyfish moves from point to point. Most of these underwater monsters are easy to avoid or defeat, again with the aim to focus on story and exploration. With only three days, focusing on simplicity is key. We didn't have time to make deep combat or stealth systems. For once, I'm really happy with the game's difficulty. We almost always fall in the trap of making our game jam games too hard. Going down in fish story feels just right. It takes about 8 minutes to complete and hopefully won't see players quit in frustration due to ridiculous difficulty spikes. I think a good rule to follow with game jams is make it short and sweet. People don't usually want to spend more than 10 minutes on a single jam game, especially when there's so many to playtest. For the first day, we mostly built different characters and systems, placing everything together in a messy heap. We have jellyfish and little parallax experiments, even a massive spooky boss with three beating hearts. Yan took the leap and began assembling all these desperate parts into a cohesive, interesting level. I would be right behind, beautifying the world. This was done by placing little patterns like shells, husks, and rocks on the terrain for a little more detail. Adding background and foreground patterns also added a lot of depth and life to the ocean. I made wobbly blue fish that would just swim nice and chilled out in the backgrounds. I would often reference Yan's level sketch, looking for landmarks to illustrate, such as this spooky vine corridor the happy breeding grounds or toothy hollow. Making an adventure game, even a tiny one, can be an ambitious undertaking. For our world to be interesting, we needed variety, different colors, rooms, and creatures. Duplicating the same piranha everywhere would have been a real bore. Let's make a tiny adventure sounded easy and fun, and sure it was really enjoyable, but very challenging to bring to life with such little time. Thankfully we were four and very well equipped to collaborate, thanks to Unity's built-in collab system. I was happy to have a quiet adventure with no dialogue, partly because I was concerned we didn't have the time, and sure there's much to love in environmental storytelling or quiet protagonists, but Yan and Jonas went above and beyond during the final hours working until 2 in the morning to complete the story Yan had written out and voice acted. Anyway, down we die! They animated mini cutscenes and brought the characters and world to life. Jonas's sister, Clara, also did some great voice acting for Bublin, the player character yes. 
which was a as great help. As long as we stay together, nothing can stop us. You're right. Let's never lose each other. Uba? Uba, where are you? Oh no! By the way, in case you didn't know, Jonas has an awesome channel and he'll be posting his own devlog on going down in fishery in the following weeks. If you want to follow another awesome developer, then check out Yan, who's working on Glitchon with Riverforge Games. For future game jams, I would like to focus on gameplay heavy systems that can easily be scaled or expanded on. Basically having a playable, fun prototype after a couple hours would be the goal. Going down in Fishtery was a wobbly mess for a long time, and only really came together at the very end of the jam. It was a tough challenge, and if it wasn't for the awesome team, we wouldn't have been able to complete the project on time. You can of course play the game for free using the link in the description, and the entire team would be extremely curious to hear your thoughts on the project. This video was sponsored by Jason Wyman, an industry expert. He's the creator of various in-depth courses focused on the art of game creation. As a special deal right now, we're offering the Blackthorn Bundle, which includes not just one, but all three courses at the price of just one. You can start with the programmer course, which will equip you with the knowledge you need to bring your ideas to life using Unity by teaching you the basics of C-sharp, vector math, AI, and even multiplayer. The mastery course goes even further by bringing you through the process of creating entire games from scratch, such as a top-down shooter or FPS. And after learning how to professionally structure your games with the Master Architects course, you'll be able to use Unity on a professional level. What's more, you get life support from Jason himself whenever you need help, and will have access to the Discord server to connect, learn, and get inspired by other game developers all over the world. So check out the Blackthorn bundle by simply clicking the link in the description, and this will give you access to every single course, a free copy of my latest commercial game, Dashing Fire, and huge discounts on future courses from Jason. Thanks a ton for watching. Stay tuned, cheers.